Yeah, it's it's coming up. I'm gonna pull down my tarp and oh my gosh, yeah, we gotta we gotta pack it and get out of here. Okay, well we abandoned. We're up on it's the the sun's starting to come up. We got our vehicles up on the road. Um, the water just keeps coming up. And uh, we're not in any danger anymore, but we're glad we got, we're glad we're moved with the vehicles. And we're on the, the high road out. Wow. This is actually very impressive. The, I would say from the last time I made this video, the water has come up eight, 10 inches. I mean, Last year, that, that big tree was not in the water, right? No. Last year. No. This is this is pretty high, and it's happened in a short amount of time. Jeez. Well. Yesterday, I mean, there's a huge tree down. Yeah, down underneath the water. Some, yeah. You can't even see it. I mean, that this this river came up six feet right eight feet maybe yeah in what four hours we decided we was going to go ahead and load up and go for a drive as we drove around we could tell just by all the water running off the mountains that there had been a lot of rain especially in our area. All right, so we're deploying audio recorder number two. As you can see, it has an auxiliary battery pack. And we are doing this at the location we call the homestead. And uh, Shane Church, Brian Hulin may recognize this location. So there has been strange occurrences happen here. We will pick this up on the way out. One of our goals for this trip was to hike into an extremely inaccessible area there on this peninsula. There's only one way in really. So we decided we was going to park as close as we could and work our way in. I really need to change my shirt. <laughs> I'm clean. I just put on a brand new one. You need to... you need to use the first aid kit. I've got some snacks or mine. What? So we found these trees already. They look like they're all bowed out. Like maybe this is the path. This is the way. It's cool.
you know that path that uh, that thing took whenever it left after it scared the crap out of Coleman last year it would have come up this way right here skirting the edge doesn't that make sense It's on both sides, really. Hey, look at this tree. That says bonsai. That one? No. That one? The baby one. Take the road. And this was the last time Eric Schrader was ever seen. Did you hear that weird noise about five minutes ago? I farted. That's not unusual. It makes a weird noise. Hmm. Well, it must have been hugely loud if I heard it from down the hill.
turn your radio off. Anybody ever seen one of these? That's a tree. It got struck by lightning. Burned it all the way down into the roots. Whoa! Watch out. There's some grab you vine. Well, it doesn't look like much on a topo map, but when you look at it in person, you're like, whoa. This place is a lot bigger than it looks on the map. Jeez. So we're on a peninsula, right? Surrounded by that raging river. Yeah. On three sides. Where we parked would be the only foot like, traffic for humans right if, right if there were Sasquatches up here they would have a sentry posted in that area as soon as we pulled up he would have yeah taken off I didn't hear any tree knocks or no you know I heard that whoop once we got a little ways in but I'm not sure that that's what that was on top of that though we haven't seen any signs no not what, really what, what signs are we looking for we're not gonna find footprints out here well maybe in the right situation but there, I haven't seen anything that I would consider a tree structure, but a nest, a tree structure, mm -hmm. place where they maybe even spent the night last night in that horrible rainstorm. I know. Yeah, no kidding. I don't know. I still think there might be caves here, and that would answer a lot of questions. Where they might just, if that somebody shows up, they might retreat to the caves. But I don't know. You know, there's a lot of um, fallen trees down there. That looks promising. Well, let's go check that out. And down there. Okay. And this this area that I'm pointing at is on the far end of the peninsula, far yeah. away from a yeah. human just popping up and surprising anyone. Yeah, by the time we get back over there, I may need another break. <laughs> this place is crazy. Man, there's a lot of lightning strikes up here or There is an unusual amount of trees down over here, especially considering we were on top of the hill and there were very few trees down. You would think that the wind would be worse at the top of the hill. Roger? you hear that? I'm probably losing my marbles. I swear I heard something. We're making too much noise moving though.
Boy, it really took out this pine tree right here. The what? They're all going this way. Yeah. They're all... What is that? Uh, east? They're all falling east. You say something, I heard something. Now, it's like all these trees are pushed over with root balls exposed. This is not that long ago. So, as Eric pointed out, we've got this giant A anomaly, but uh, looks totally natural to me. What do you think, Eric? What's that? You think it looks natural? Oh, yeah. I think it's natural. I don't see anything spooktacular about it, but it is kind of cool looking. Yeah, hey, whatever that, that tree came from there. Okay, Richie from Massachusetts. Here's your arch. A little big. I don't see anything holding it down. Now, when, uh, when I was a kid, we, would, we could climb yeah. when we were tall. And then you hold on to the top. Right. And you swing out and you parachute down. You walk it down. Now, that permanently made them stay like this. You tweak them out, huh? That, I use that word on purpose. They permanently like this now. And look at all these trees. Yeah. And now, I wonder. Did you hear that woodpecker? So, that, that tree, that last one, Look at that. There's a tree over here pointing east. There's another tree that's fallen and pointing east. Yeah, you see these other trees. Perfect. You know, they. Yeah. What I'm saying is, I wonder if that's like a, a jungle gym. Well, yeah. You know, they can't climb straight up, so they, they lean the tree into another tree and they can learn to climb better. I don't know. I, I'll buy that. Because honestly, we haven't seen this many trees this kind of environment uh -huh. uh, until now the whole time we were on the peninsula until no. now bam it's like right? we just walked into this yeah there were no other fallen trees where we we're just mm -hmm. at and there's, which is there's over half a mile and a lot of these a lot of these look like they've been pushed over you know you know they just I don't know but you're right, something happened here, something unusual, and it looks like all these trees got pushed over at roughly the same time. They look like they were all done about the same time. Now, you could explain that with a wind gust, but what are we, what are we talking, one of those microbursts we blame everything on? Right. I don't know. I yeah. first saw it, I was like, is that a baby Sasquatch? Yeah. <laughs> fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Yeah. 
What is that? It looks like it's made out of pine needles. It's some kind of nest. Yeah, some kind of nest. But you know, we're here's another tree pointing east. Another one. Yeah. Yeah. It's got buds on it. Still alive. I've got some drone footage of the area that we're exploring. If you look, you can actually see some of those trees that are pushed over and pointing east. So, that uh, peninsula it was a lot bigger than I thought, going by what was on the map. And, you know, you look at the map, you pull up a topo map of it, and you can see that there's some topography changes, you know, but... Man, it was like everything over there was just up or down, up or down. It was, that was a pretty tough hike. I don't know what the distance was on it, but we were gone for several hours. And, man, I was, now, you know, it don't take much to kick my ass, but that was, uh, that was a pretty tough one, I think. I know I was sucking on the water bladder pretty hard there for a while. I may need to refill it before we go back out again tomorrow. So. We had uh, battery issues up there too, didn't we? You my, know, now that you say that. My Garmin GPS battery low. 
FYI. And I had to change the uh, the batteries on my audio recorder before we left because I got out. And remember, I I checked it down here at the campsite, and it was like three of four bars on the battery. And then I get up there to that location where we left the vehicle and deployed. And it was like on one bar and it was flashing at me. And my Sentry camera, it's a, it's a camera that I leave in the woods and uh, it died. And uh, I don't know, that's just kind of weird, but the weirdest thing was definitely the trees. You know, what your three inch diameter at the base, maybe 20 feet tall, falling down like an arch, they're arched over. Nothing obviously hit it. Just in that back corner, they were a lot. Yeah, I mean, what would you say that that area was like less than five acres? In that back corner? Yeah. That we just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was like, of all that land over there, I mean, you would occasionally see a tree down, but then you get back to that back five acres, and it was like all those, and they looked like they'd been pushed over. But they were all pushed to the east. They were pointing towards the east. So. And that's the big trees, the uh, two yeah. foot, three foot diameter at the base trees that were pushed over facing the east. Um, and it was all in this one little five acres. But there was at least, at least 25 of them that were pushed over and pointing east. And we found one tree, one tree that was put, looked like it was pushed over, but it was pointing north. And it was away from everything else. Like, maybe it really was from a wind gust or something. I don't know. But, and you know, people say, oh, that's a microburst or whatever. That was down in a valley. And I know people say, well, that can still happen, but. Sure. Yep. I mean, sure what? Can. what's easier to believe, you know? I mean, I know microbursts is. My microbursts are a documented scientific phenomenon. Okay, I'm cool with that, but you know, it's a uh, I don't know. It's almost a lazy excuse. You know, it's like, well, we'll just put this rubber stamp on it and just dismiss it. But the thing that kind of struck me is, is you know, there was that area is like super bad for for footprints. You know, with all those pine trees pine trees and rocks and if we were going to find any footprints over there it would be on that old logging road I think where you know now granted it's been a long long time ago but you know once upon a time that was tilled up you know but I don't know that was one long high and one thing that you cannot see in that video very well is how dramatic all the ups and downs were I mean hell I'd get to the top of a hill and I'd be like golly you know hell that one time I just sat down and leaned up against a tree I was done <laughs> I was done but we, yeah, we were just constantly going up and down up and down that topography map kind of I don't know. It made it lied to us. <laughs> it kind of lied to me because, I mean, well, I mean, I guess it it probably depends. It depends on what the the increments are. I mean, if it was a if it was a one hundred foot increment map where every line is a one hundred footer, yeah, then I could probably see that. But if it was 
if it was a 25 footer i mean it would geez it would look pretty dramatic but golly that place is beautiful you need to remake the map and just on that peninsula i know zoom it in get yeah. more detail i have a funny feeling that there might be some caves on that place i have no real reason to believe that other than the fact that there's bats flying around us right now but and i want to believe there's <laughs> hey there you go i want to believe there's caves up there But I don't know. I mean, some of these, some of these people that they have on these podcasts are, you know, I don't know. They're not what I would consider to be reliable. And that's the problem when you get into a lot of these shows where the people that are making these shows are making a lot of money. Yeah. And... If it sounds interesting... Yeah. Sign them up. Whether it's real or not, I don't know. You know, I, I swear I've heard people say, you know, there was about three meters out, maybe maybe about three yards. You know? It, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you most... don't have pe a good reference of distance. Most people will either, you know, do feet or they'll do yards. And I really think that some people don't know what they are. What a meter, no. how long a meter is and how long a yard is. Three feet in a yard, buddy. You know. Yeah, and a meter is about the same. A <laughs> hundred yards is 300 feet. But, you know, you got to realize that your average Joe out there is definitely, they're probably not the type of person that goes to the gun range and shoots rifles at 100, 200, and 300 yards. Um, they're not... They're not, you know... They've never had a uh, range finder. <laughs> yeah. Well, even if they did, they wouldn't have time to use it. But, you know, all I'm going to say is, is you've got to cut a lot of these people just because they say, I'm an avid outdoorsman. Um, that really doesn't mean a whole lot in my book. So... And I'm not saying that I'm the guru of whatever, but... What I am saying is, is most of these people, they think that just because they were in the Cub Scouts in sixth grade, they think that that makes them an avid outdoorsman. <laughs> so, no, I'm serious. Like, they, they think that, you know, I've camped out five times in my life, you know. I drive by this forest every day. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> So, but yeah, I, I don't know. You've got to, you've got to, you just kind of, kind of keep your head straight. You got to listen kind of, you know, with a, an open mind, but also a cynical mind because, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these podcasts, you know, once, once you get this, a certain level of, of revenue rolling in, the temptation is there. And you've got to be careful because that kind of money commands respect. I'd like to think that I was above that, you know, but, you know, you don't really know until you've got money coming in like that and that the real, the temptation is real. Um, you know, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sell my integrity for a couple of thousand dollars. Now, you want to start talking about millions? I mean, we might be able to negotiate. Okay, guys, check this out. I think this is a good tree knock here. There's a lot of wind in the background. That was weird. Starting to kind of 
There's one in the pipe. And by the way, Carla, I do have a knife. So you don't have to worry about me. Carla's weren't wondering about knives. <laughs> I got a, a lady that lives down the sea. She's always giving me a hard time about not having a knife. And uh, by the way, this uh, this is four foot of paracord. And that is specifically so in a sort of desperate situation, I can lash this knife to an actual spear. So hopefully it never comes to that. Hopefully it just looks pretty. You got a snack? Survival rations? Snacks, yes. Today I have two strawberry, two grape. You got your raw video? Apple. My what? Raw video. There you go. Has it got any juice in it? When we get back, we need to recharge the radio. Frequency mode. Still have one, three bars, three out of four. To find some tracks. We were on the shelf about whether or not a Bigfoot or any other cryptid creature would have a, a reason to be in a, a forest like this that has been on fire. But um, we don't know. And it might make it easier to find tracks if they were. But we also had a ton of rain. So the possibility of finding footprints might be there. As you can tell, there was a lot of rain. Jeez. It's still just still draining. It's, yeah, what was that, two days ago? That looks like it's probably a spring, though. I don't know, dude. It does look like it's just coming out of the ground right there, doesn't it? Yeah. So, the aquifers are full, I would say. Yeah. It's all coming. It's like it's saturated into the pine needles. Because the pine needles are so thick. Which is one of the reasons why you don't find a whole lot of footprints around here. It's because the pine needles, they, I mean, I, if I had to explain it, I would say they kind of act like a, a sponge. A cushion. good if we're out here we do find prints because of that storm two nights ago now they've had two days to leave some prints they will be fresh they will be super fresh this is where that pond was right down there? no it was further down on this road yeah yeah we've been here before for you people at home and uh we came out here a year Hogs? ago. What? Hogs. It's a dirt. They've been rooting. Now, uh, it's just a 
it's a shadow. Oh. Holy. Well, sometimes you find these huge hog wallers down here. Hell, I don't know what three quarters of them mean, but I'm trying to learn. So, anyway. you guys at home see anything comment in the comments and leave a timestamp it is really quiet out here right now but you can hear birds See a place like this, you could catch footprints. Okay, guys, got it set up and running. So here's the plan. This is what I call the Sentry. Basically, it is an old tripod that I've converted to use with two different older iPhones that I have that have working cameras and a GoPro. I set them up in the woods, somewhere along the path. In that bag is one of those auxiliary battery packs that powers it all. And this thing will watch our six in a way of putting it right so now we're going to head back this way you'll probably see some video footage in our videos of this thing filming us walking away so anyway we're off just thought i'd show you guys that So the last time we were here, we found one of those huts right here, a hooch or whatever you want to call it. And uh, it looks like the burn might have got some of it, but uh, it looked like somewhere in here, what'd you find? More quartz? Yeah. Has it got pink in it? Yeah. Nice. I, I think so. Or it's iron. It's pitted too. I don't know if you could. Yeah. You can see some sparkles. Huh. That's interesting. We, every once in a while, we find some quartz out here. But it was just right in here somewhere. I don't see the. There was a domed arch hooch type thing that was was right in here but it's obviously been kind of destroyed now hmm that's a shame i was walking down the trail and i remembered that and i thought about richie and i thought oh man you want to see that and then it's not there anymore no figures you found the pond oh good timing That's supposed to be walking into spider webs in March. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, 
Last time we found some footprints over there. As I recall, last time we were here, I was like, next time I come here, I'm going to bring a fishing pole. See if there's any fish in here. This thing is tiny. To the road. Uh, I seen some prints down there too. Plus, it's yeah. soft. See how you can kind of see my footprints there? <laughs> we started to notice that there was a storm brewing so we went ahead and loaded up and headed back to camp and sure enough it happened again every time we go out to area xanadu it seems like we're plagued with rain and thunderstorms i don't know what the deal is well it started raining again you gotta love it See how that works? <sighs> Pretty dang cozy. Well, the sun went down and Eric and I stayed up late, kind of hanging out and joking around. We got up the next morning and broke camp. I had to go back to the homestead location to collect that audio recorder that we had left over there. But anyway, it was time to go home, unfortunately. Well, I'm a little sad. We are wrapping up the last of this expedition. And we didn't get as much evidence or encounters as what I would have preferred. We, uh, it was basically, it was 
raining and storming most of the time. Uh, we spent a lot of time hanging out underneath the tarps, and, and uh, I can't imagine the Sasquatch would be too excited about, you know, getting out in the, when it's nasty and poopy. So, looks like we're going to head into town and try to get us some breakfast. And it's a little out of the way, but we're going to stop by Tallahena and check in at the museum and see if Tanya's heard any new encounters from people coming in. I always find that kind of interesting because people just drop in and start telling Tanya about the Bigfoot stories that they the Bigfoot encounters that they had. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for tuning in.